Coming up, the Nets dominate the East's top record and the Kings knock off LeBron and the Lakers. All that and more here on Locked On Now NBA. <laughs> The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. What's going on, everybody? You are listening to Locked On Now NBA, local experts on the biggest stories on the hardwood. I am your host, Kim Becker, and thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Our Locked On NBA hosts are here to help break down everything from Wednesday and basketball. The Brooklyn Nets dominated last night's biggest game in a battle between the East's top two teams. The biggest game. As Locked On Nets will tell you, it was a massive win for the Brooklyn Nets over the Chicago Bulls last night, and the Nets clearly showed why they are the current favorites to win the NBA championship. Doug Norrie, Locked On Nets, coming at you after a massive win by the Nets over the Chicago Bulls on Wednesday, 138-112. to Scary hours back in Brooklyn. All of the big three playing, and they really showed why they're the odds-on favorite to win the championship right now. This was probably their best game of the year. Got a little bit of a monkey off their back with beating a really good team in the Bulls on the road. Uh, really everything you wanted to see through a couple of rookies into the starting lineup with De'Aaron Sharp and Kessler Edwards. And they just got it rolling downhill in the second half, 39-19 to in the third. Uh, this game did not even feel as close as the 26-point uh, difference. Everything going right for Brooklyn and showed you what can happen when these three guys are playing together sort of at their peak. This is the best team in basketball when that's the case. We are going to be breaking down the entire game. There's tons to talk about over on Locked On Nets, so go head on over there. Huge win by Brooklyn and Chicago. Well, like you just heard, Kevin Durant, James Harden, and the rest of the Brooklyn Nets played their best game of the year last night, and there was just not much Chicago could do about it. Here's Locked On Bulls with more. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. What's up, Bulls Nation? Matt Peck here from Locked On Bulls with your postgame takeaway. The Bulls get blown out at home by the Brooklyn Nets, 138-112. Brooklyn avenging their two previous losses to the Bulls this season. That wraps up the regular season series here. And as much as the talk was about Kyrie Irving making his first appearance against the Bulls this season, he was a non-factor tonight. But Kevin Durant and James Harden, boy, when they decide to dominate a game, there's not much the Bulls or anyone can do about it. Those two combined for 52 points and 25 assists tonight. And Brooklyn, as a team, shot 57% from the field, 53% from behind the arc, hitting 17 threes. Look, the Bulls were missing one of their key defenders, Alex Caruso, tonight, who's still in protocols. Javante Green is still out with an injury. In his place starting was Derrick Jones Jr., who went down with an injury of his own less than a minute into this game. That forced Billy Donovan to turn to the seldom-used Alfonso McKinney, who got into foul trouble quickly and often. The Bulls rookie, Ayo Desumu, who's also been playing some quality defense recently, got into foul trouble also, and then you could tell that impacted his defensive aggression throughout tonight's game. But sometimes all you could do is shake your head, credit the opponent for having a lights-out shooting night, and move on to the next one. The Bulls will look to do that, starting another back-to-back -back against the Warriors on Friday. For a full breakdown of this Bulls-Nets game, check out our Thursday episode of Locked on Bulls with me and my guy Big Date. Wherever you get your podcasts, Locked on Bulls, your team, every day. The Orlando Magic lost for the 10th straight time on Wednesday night against the Wizards in Washington, D.C. Cole Anthony had nearly a triple-double, and Locked On Magic explains that just wasn't enough to get Orlando the win. This is Philip Ross Wright, the host of Locked On Magic, and it's the same old song and dance for the Orlando Magic as they fall for the 10th straight time, falling to the Washington Wizards 112 to 106 up in D.C. earlier this evening. Um, it, again, the Magic were in a close game. They had their chances to win. They were down by five and just couldn't hit the shots, and Washington made the plays to 
pull away and eventually win the game. Uh, it's been a repeated refrain here for the last five or six games now where Orlando's been in the game in the fourth quarter. Again, you can't fault this team's fight. They were down by 20 early in the game. Very easily could have packed it in, uh, especially with the way that they started the game, missing seven straight shots on the opening possession, holding the ball for a minute and not coming away with any points, and then giving up seven straight field goals for the Wizards to be down by 10 very, very early in this game. Orlando, again, could have quit very, very easily. And for a team that's at the bottom of the standings and, and has the worst record in the league the way the Magic have, um, at, you know, it would have been human nature for them to do so. So give them all the credit in the world for fighting. That's been a constant refrain throughout the course of the season and something that this team has been very good at. Unfortunately, that is not enough. And very, very, you know, we're not we're at the point where, yes, we understand that this team is doing that. They're doing it consistently. That's a good thing. That's good for this team's growth. But it is not enough. It has been 10 straight losses, and Orlando has to find a way to scratch out a win. The injuries are almost solving themselves. Um, they are missing some key players. Some key players are due back here very, very soon. But the Magic have to find a way to get a win, and they have to change the script on the way that they've played so far. We'll have plenty more coming up on Locked on Magic. Until then, this has been Philip rossman -Reich. The Miami Heat came out at halftime in Atlanta with a 30-16 to third quarter that put the game away. Tyler Harrow led the way for Miami, and Locked on Heat recaps the blowout win on the road. Miami Heat wrap up a six-game road trip by cruising to a 115-91 to win over the Atlanta Hawks on Wednesday night. I'm Wes Goldberg from Locked on Heat. Tyler Hero led Miami with a near triple-double, 21 points, 11 assists, and 9 rebounds, outplaying... Hawks point guard Trey Young, who finished with just 15 points on 4 for 15 shooting and 5 assists. After starting the game by missing their first 6 shots and falling back by 11, the Heat ended up shooting 48% overall and getting double-digit scoring nights from 7 different players, including 18 points from Kayla Martin and 14 from Duncan Robinson off the bench. The Hawks came into this game struggling, so this wasn't the stiffest test for Miami. But don't forget that they're doing this without Jimmy Butler and without Bam Adebayo, and they are now 11-4 without their top two players. With the win, the Heat moved to 26 and 15. For more on tonight's win and Tyler Hero's big game, check out Locked On Heat on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. The Atlanta Hawks just continue to struggle in Atlanta. This loss marked nine in a row at home. Locked On Hawks tries to figure out why exactly it's been so hard to win in front of the home fans. Hello, friends. My name is Brad Rowland. I'm Atlanta Hawks. Go down at the head to the Miami Heat on Wednesday evening. A final score of 115 to 91. A crater offensively for the Hawks in this game. You can find some optimism on the defensive end of the floor where the Hawks have been a little bit better the last two games. But with this loss, the Hawks have now lost nine consecutive games at home. They have not won a home game since before Thanksgiving. And here in mid-January, that is a long, long time, even when you account for a long road trip. Again, the offense just kind of credited in this game. Nothing to do on the end of the floor. The one bright spot there, DeAndre Hunter, came back after a two-month absence. That's a, obviously a positive sign for Atlanta, but not a lot of uh, stuff to write home about in this game. A flat effort, a uh, disastrous third quarter for the Hawks. that kind of buried them in this game. And looking back at the beginning of the game, they led 13-2. to two. At that point in time, there was some optimism, but from there, it was all heat. And with, the, with this loss, the Hawks have a lot of questions to answer in advance of a rematch in Miami on Friday. We'll have more on this game and much more on Locked on Hawks podcast. Coming up, Darius Garland helped the Cavs beat the Jazz in Utah and RJ Barrett put up another big scoring night in the Garden. This is Locked on Now NBA. Bet Online would like to wish you guys a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action in 2022 from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, and even your favorite Vegas casino games. You don't want to wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available this year. A new year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on to get started. That's one word all together, locked on, and you'll get that 50% bonus on your first deposit. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports. So don't wait any longer. Go to bet online where the game starts. Welcome back to Locked On Now NBA. I am Kim Becker. Let's continue our look around the NBA with the help of our local Locked On hosts. Let's go around the league. 
Darius Garland put up his first career triple-double and the Cavs' first triple-double since LeBron left as he helped the Cavaliers beat the Utah Jazz. Watching from the sideline and calling the game for Utah, our David Locke tells you more from last night's best performance. The best performance. Hold up, hold up. As COVID spreads across the Utah Jazz, they've lost their fourth in a row and slipped to fourth in the Western Conference. David Locke with Locked on Jazz after the Cleveland Cavaliers come into Utah and beat the Jazz 111 to 91. The Jazz four-game losing streak second and a half have been a problem. The Jazz have been outscored by 67 points in the second half of the last four ball games. And tonight it was a 21-0 run by the Cleveland Cavaliers in the third quarter that changed this game. The Jazz were down six at the half, and then the Cavaliers went on a 21-0 run led by Lamar Stevens that usurped any hope the Jazz might have of winning this ballgame. Early in the game, the Jazz were getting to the rim at will. They scored nine field goals within five feet in the first quarter, added another four in the second quarter, and did not score a two-point basket in the third quarter of this game as the length of the Cavaliers finally took effect. Jazz lose to the Cavaliers, 111-91. The Jazz have lost four in a row. R.J. Barrett became the youngest Nick ever to score 30 points in consecutive games, putting up 32 on his way to helping the New York Knicks beat the Dallas Mavericks. Locked on Knicks tells you more of what happened last night in the Garden. Hey, everyone. Alex Wolf from Locked on Knicks here. And the Knicks win 108-85 to over the Dallas Mavericks at home. Home is starting to feel a little more like home for the Knicks, and it's certainly feeling good for R.J. Barrett. 32 points, 13-22 from the field, 4-7 from three, seven boards, two assists. I mean, he had a fantastic performance, his second straight 30-point game, first time in his career that he's done that with the back-to-back performances like that. He looked smooth. He was scoring from every position on the court. Just an amazing performance for him. Quite frankly, I mean, you know, not saying anything about where they're at in their careers right now, but outshine Luka Doncic on the Madison Square Garden floor, which is no small feat because Doncic is certainly a a fantastic player. Julius Randle, too, you know, amid all this uh, apparent fan controversy, whatever, uh, 17 points, 12 boards, 8 assists, really was a, a leader on the court tonight, setting up his teammates, getting everybody going, and getting this whole offense going. One of the first games that I can remember, or maybe the first game period this season, where all five starters scored in double digits, and all of them were resounding positives on the court. So this feels like progress for the Knicks. Great game for them. They're back to 500. They have a little bit of a cushy schedule still coming up before things get a little harder. It's going to be a really telling time to see where they're at. So we'll have it all for you on Locked on Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast. The Dallas Mavericks had won six straight games before falling to New York on Wednesday night, and Locked On Mavs tells you what went wrong for Luka and Dallas on the road. Well, the Mavs' six-game winning streak comes to an end. Nick Angstead from the Locked On Mavericks podcast here, and the Mavericks went into the Madison Square Garden and forgot how to play basketball. Just came down to that. They looked absolutely awful. Everything we've been saying about this Mavericks team Over this last six-game stretch, how good the defense has been, how the three-point shooting is back to earth, all that kind of stuff just went out the window. Everything that could have gone bad for the Mavericks in this game did. They shot 8 of 37 from three, and it was even worse than that before a couple of threes at the end there. The Mavericks just brutal across the board. Couldn't defend, couldn't defend in the post, couldn't defend around the perimeter. It was just a bad night overall for the Mavericks. They lost pretty much everything that was going right for them. Bad night for Luka Doncic again, who just continues his bad shooting. One of nine from the from three for him. Only five assists. The Mavericks only 16 assists total in this game. Just everything that was going right for them went wrong for them in this game. We'll unpack it all on the Lockdown Maps podcast tonight. The Boston Celtics season has been a struggle so far. So Locked On Celtics was more than ready to tell you about Boston's easy win over the Pacers yesterday. Jason Tatum led the way again, and the Celtics picked up their third straight win in a second straight game against Indiana. The Boston Celtics cruise to an easy win. The Boston Celtics cruise to an easy win. I'm John Corrales here from the Lockdown Celtics podcast, and the Boston Celtics opened up hot from three. They had a late second quarter swoon, but they responded amazingly well in the third quarter, outscoring the Indiana Pacers 33-12 in a critical 
third quarter that they don't usually play well in. And then they cruise from there. The Celtics actually had a fairly comfortable win where you can kind of chalk up that late second half run by the Pacers as every team makes a run. The Celtics got 34 points from Jalen Brown, 33 points from Jason Tatum, 23 points from Dennis Schroeder, who is such a different player when he's a starter. When he's a starter, he just seems to be much more comfortable. He does not play well off the bench. But the Celtics run away with this 119-100 over the Indiana Pacers. And seriously, much needed. 35 minutes from Jalen Brown, 37 from Jason Tatum. That seems like a lot. That's a real step down from how many minutes they usually play. Uh, those guys had it going in every way, all three levels of scoring. They were hitting from three. They were hitting mid-range. They were hitting at the rim. They were attacking. They were getting out in transition. This was very, very nice to see. I don't expect it to last because this is the Celtics. I don't know how it's going to continue. I don't know how they're going to do against the Sixers and the Bulls, who are their next two opponents. But for now, the Celtics get themselves back to 500, which is about where they've been all season long. Can they build on it? I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to talk about it on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. And also, watch the show on YouTube. And that's a wrap for us. Thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. For more on the association and your favorite team, make your second listen Locked On NBA and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kim Becker. This has been Locked On Now. Locked On your team every day.